Wisconsin University. I dated a sweet little girl who was taking psychology at university. I was taking agriculture business at the University of Guelph. And she was taking psychology. I had no idea what psychology meant. I was from the backwoods of Bob Cajun. And she told, so I asked her, what, what does psychology mean? And she said, psychology, let me give you an example, she said. Vince Lombardi in 67, 68, he took a second class franchise with third class players called the Green Bay Packers. And he got them to win two Super Bowl championships. And the reason was, was that he didn't teach them how to play, uh, throw the football. He didn't run them through extra drills. What his emphasis was on was psychology and applying those, the principles of psychology to his niche of football. He got each player playing at his optimum best and then he got the, uh, the team playing together as one. And that's why he won championships. And she was excited that back in the 90s when, when I was going to school and she was going to school, they were just starting to apply those principles to business. And that's what she was going to do for a living. And I looked at her and I said, what, what does psychology, a wishy-washy subject like psychology, have to do with growing corn? And at the time, I thought learning knowledge about how to grow crops, how, how to apply fertilizers, um, these type of things, was more important than her degree. Five years later, when I went home to actually farm with my, my father and my mother, I realized that her degree had more application. Because you can be the smartest farmer in the world, but if you're butting heads with your family members and you can't get everybody pulling in the same direction, knowledge and skills are absolutely useless. And so it's important for agriculture, I believe, to actually apply the principles of sports psychology, uh, psychology the same as Vince Lombardi applied psychology to his niche of football. And, you know, too often you see brothers, for instance, they split up the operation because they can't get along. Last, um, last summer, last summer uh, just in early May, I had a call from Kansas and the guy called me up and basically his brother was just about to lose the farm and he was very close behind. And I talked to the father, his father was 82 the day before. And he says, I don't understand what's going on with my boys. You know, when I gave them the farm 10 years ago, it's 1,200 acres of prime agricultural land, best in the county. All the equipment was paid for, we had no debt, there's no debt on the land. And now we're about to lose it all. And then what happened was, the two boys had jealousies and issues between the two of them. They couldn't work together. And as a result, they split up the operation. That was what their accountant told them to do. And then they hit, got hit by a couple of years of bad, bad um, crop yields. And, and they basically lost their economies of scale and had to go out and buy full lines of equipment. And they got into a bit of a competition as to who could buy a bigger sprayer, who could buy a bigger uh, drill, you know. And they had the same land base. They didn't, it didn't expand that much, much further. They rented a few hundred acres extra each, but really didn't in increase their economies of scale. And they had to hire extra men. They had to hire two extra men each. And it was instead of the father and the two sons doing the combining together, they had to hire the extra crews. And they lost their economies of scale. And it's a shame to see if that's how family empires are built and how they fall apart. It's the issues of psychology are simply not uh, cause families uh, to fall apart, not financial issues. Financial issues are a side effect. And you know, what we need to do is learn to get brothers farming together more effectively. You know, one time I uh, got called out by the priest the day before he had to step between two brothers at a funeral. And what he did was uh, he had me out, me and the priest sat at the table, and the two brothers weren't even looking at each other. And the two brothers really hadn't spoken for a couple of years. And there were some issues between the wives, but the real issue was the fact that the father had compared the one brother against the other. And he had used that effectively over the last 15 years. Each brother had a competition as to who could work harder. And that farm had flourished. You know, over 15 years, it had gone from a $5 million farm when they came over from Holland to Canada to a $20 million farm because the boys worked their butts off to earn their father's appreciation and his love. 
It was a competition for daddy's love. But I took him behind the shed. And I says, you boys can go ahead and fight. The thing is, your dad was a really good man. But he had his faults. And his one fault was that he created this jealousy between the two of you now that you can't even look at each other. You know, this jealousy caused you to grow the operation the way it has because it got more work, at, work done. It also caused each man to be a more upstanding citizen and having better character than the other. But it's also causing you to split this operation. I said to them, your, your operation has got, is up to debt here. If you split the operation, you're going to lose your economies of scale. You're both going to be broke, or at least one of you is going to be broke within 10 years' time. And what's the sense of that? So you can either fight it out and hate each other for the next 20 years, but your daddy died yesterday. And there's no sense in fighting for your daddy's love because he's in the ground. You've got to put your issues aside and move on. And that was the longest two minutes because they were standing each other off for a minute. And then, then they moved on. And the, those two boys, they still have issues, but they're learning to work together instead of butting heads. And they are taking on the world together. It's a dramatic how a little two-minute discussion like that can change the history for a family for the next several generations. You look at the players on the bench of an NBA franchise. Do you think all those players can, can get along? Heck no, they're the best across the country. But in, as Vince Lombardi, they were butting heads. But if you can get everybody pulling in the same direction, your farmer will have that competitive edge that your neighbors won't have. And by getting that edge, you'll have more profitability. Your farm will grow at a much faster rate. And most importantly, the daily stress that you have is going to be less. And family Christmas will be a lot more fun. And most importantly, you know, every day is going to be a lot more fun. And farming should be fun. Farming with family ain't always easy. But if you can use the best of psychology, and apply it into your operation in a way that works for your operation. It can make give you that competitive edge that you need to survive in the future. My name is Mark Andrew Junkin, President of Agriculture Strategy. Give me a call anytime.